anyone has a, I'm sorry, anyone has an SD card reader or something with you? A big SD card reader? I'll try to connect this guy to my uh, PC and then do a demo at least. I don't want to do a demo. Do we have a SD card reader? A big SD card reader or something? Let me see. Okay, okay. I, um, I don't know why. No, this does not mean that Raspberry Pi is not good, it's my setup. <laughs> so it's like typically when I uh, give presentation, yeah, this always gives me a, uh, oh, I need to edit it actually. Yeah. I have this size, I want to start, I need to actually edit this guy. Yeah. I have my PC, but my PC will not work actually. Yeah. I'll, I'll still try it out. Uh. You have to just bear with me for a few minutes. Uh. You can ask questions meanwhile if you want, I'll uh, try to get this done. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. default Raspberry Pi Pi combination for the GPIO header. Uh, I'll open this in Firefox. 
uh, Chrome has, my Chrome has some problems so it will not actually uh, uh, show the toggle. Let me open a Firefox app. That's the default uh, example they have given to toggle GPIO and play with GPIO. We'll now be overwriting that framework with our own custom code using the APIs to build a very simple toggle stuff up. And then we'll take it from there. Let's do Firefox come up. So I'll open up the GPIO header. Uh, you can see all the GPIO pins. I didn't change the direction uh, to either be an output pin or an input pin or stuff like that. Now let me connect uh, uh, the GPIO pin 19, GPIO pin 11 or to or say something else. the most simplest example. I just um, read this uh, stuff, open up the GPIO pin, and just toggle it right away. Now you might see it's a little older. When I make it high, it goes uh, low. Yeah. When I make it low, it goes high. Why is that? <laughs> pull up brushes, uh, you need to pull up uh, the other way around. Exactly. So it's a simple thing. My relay board is a active low board, which means when I give it high, it turns off. When I give it low, it turns off. That's the only thing. So I can simply toggle or I can play around this direction as well. You can even directly connect uh, GPS modules or uh, receivers to the Raspberry Pi and then play around anything. Now that is the existing default application. Now I would use the framework and build around custom code to see how it is to build something. Okay, now let's do that. Uh, and I'll talk about the code uh, back in the back end what's happening eventually because that's more of the demo. So let's say sudo uh, webiofi-c etc etc webiofi config dot. So I'm now saying WebIOPI to use my custom app that is located in a config location at so and so. So I'm saying a hyphen C slash etc slash web slash config. So you're hosting WebIOPI from Apache? No, that's what I'm saying. WebIOPI itself is running on Raspberry Pi itself. No need of Apache also. So yep, yep. You don't need any nothing, any nothing. It itself configures all, it opens up post API, you can even do a client uh, call from a different device with Raspberry Pi itself. For. It, is a, it, it must be a, some port of some uh, core of it. What is the core of it? Okay, it's based on DBN OS. Yeah, See, this guy is okay. not any OS. Okay. WebIOPI is a framework that sits on top of the existing Raspbian framework, or Raspbian OS, like say DBN or Ubuntu. Okay, right? It's just a framework that allows you to uh, configure the whole Pi as an IoT device. Okay. So it itself is not a OS, it's just a framework. It's like a web admin. Uh, huh, kind of thing. Think, 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 uh, think of that in that way. Yep. So let me run up this uh, custom app. That's my first example. So let's open up the browser again. Now, if I open up uh, port 8000, I would now get a custom code. This is what I've written. Earlier on the same uh, uh, IP, we were getting up their default part. Now I have asked the web to run with my custom code. So you will see now two lines which I have just made real quick. Now again, I can actually uh, toggle and play around. Now I want someone from you to take up your phone, connect to my hotspot. What is your password for the hotspot? Uh, it's is open it actually. Yeah. It's open access, sir. No, it's not actually. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> can anyone again, okay, can someone else also try? And it's all async. The idea why I want to show is that when you actually change yeah, it from your device, sir, it will even reflect back over here also, or not connecting. It's connected, it's connected. Okay, can you open up the IP address, sir? Forty-two dot one colon eight thousand. You have to put eight thousand. That's where the port is running. I mean the web page is running. You got the web page. Yeah. Now it's some it's loading. Okay. I actually need a better uh, Wi-Fi model with an antenna for all people to connect. Okay. It's, it's not loading. It's not loading. Yeah. Anyone at least? <laughs> okay, try your try your default browser, not Chrome at least. I tell you my Chrome has a problem. I'm doing Firefox. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the whole idea I want to show is that this syncs across all clients. Term. So like say any user now controls the process the LED from his device, that will be reflected back to my uh, PC or any other device that opens it up. That's the only thing I want to show it through uh, you having it open it up. So like say when I uh, when someone else goes and changes over there, it will even change the light back on my web page. So like we have hundreds of clients so all synced with the state of the hardware. That's the whole idea I want to show it. Can anyone can try actually? Uh, I'll just give one minute. That's what we give it up. No, I think there are too many people trying to. Okay, yeah, everyone stop, stop it. I just stop it. I just have uh, you trying. You are connected to the hotspot. Anyone else connected to the hotspot? You? Can you try? Okay, where is my phone? Do you have my phone? Hmm. It's stuck at obtaining IP. Yeah, it's stuck at obtaining IP address now. I think you know why that is happening. Yeah. We'll try one small thing. I actually did a small hack. That hack is not working. We just reboot and try it once again if the hotspot comes up. Uh, because I have actually done my hack with the LAN IP and also the Wi Fi. So it might be conflicting with uh, this one. Uh. We'll try it again and see if my Wi Fi comes up. Uh, and then we will take it from there. If not, we'll go back. Okay. Yes. Yes. So how did I get the AC part here? Yeah. Can anyone answer the question for him? How did you isolate? You use the relay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's a relay in between, but how are you driving the relay? Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. Are so you uh, using uh, while the ramp comes up, a relay is a device that takes in digital uh, data or something and then okay. just closes the switch somewhere else. Uh, that switch could be anything. It could be AC, DC voltage at any end. Uh, at one end, you have a driver input that allows you to close the switch on the other part. So what driver are you using, like ULN 280? Yes, ULN 280 is a standard yeah. one. I am using opto driver. Oh, yeah. okay. But typically you use a ULN 2003 or a stuff yeah, that drive the yeah. current year. Yeah. Okay. I hope my hotspot comes up again. I no, it is, but it is still not connected. No. So can, can anyone try connecting the hotspot now? It should actually come up now. You should be able to have access to it now. Any luck? No. <laughs> if not, then we'll go ahead. Not a box. We'll not waste time. Anyone access? If not, then we can no problem. We just skip. Not a box, sir. Let's ignore that. I have to kill this guy. Okay, we restart the session. So even I'm not able to connect. So. Uh, it hasn't taken up the IP. It's not connected. Yeah, it's having trouble assigning the IP. IP okay, yep, yep, yep. So in that case, just give me one 60 seconds. I'll have to just uh, take out this guy, put up my hack, and then we'll turn <coughs>
I'll show one more demo. Uh, I just, uh, I'll show one more demo actually. This uh, GPIO, the LED lights, the buttons, etc. They have all been created by just one command. I didn't have to even know HTML or JavaScript or stuff to actually build GPIO pins or get that mapping. And I did not even have to do any backend mapping that this button has to be connected to this button and then write the entire drivers, etc. The framework does it all for me. I just have to declare pin 17, give a name, led one, that's it. I don't have to worry about going in the backend Python code and then playing around. So this feature he has given itself by him. Now, assuming you want to create a button that does a different process, like this button has been only created to do a GPIO toggling on off. Okay. Say you want to send an email. Like we have we do a lot of stuff. Okay, when a PIR is rejected, you send an email through Python. So if you want to run any custom Python code on click of a button, we would call something called as a macro. So we'll now create a macro running in the backend Python code, which will be triggered from your button over here. And in the Python, you can do whatever Python supports on Raspberry Pi. Call emails, do image processing, or get license plates done, like do whatever you want to do with that. And because the front end is again based on HTML and all that stuff, you can use any HTML stuff in the framework. Like we have very fancy Angular JS uh, library or JavaScript or Or I'll show what I have done with uh, the framework. Any JS library can be put inside the front end. So now you have the best of both the worlds uh, through the framework. In the backend Python, do whatever Python supports. Sir. In the front end, do whatever HTML supports. Sir. You can put Bootstrap or put Foundation uh, frameworks. Sir. Make it responsive, make it UI, do whatever you want to do. The framework only allows to easily connect the backend with the front end. That's the whole idea of the framework. Sir. Along with support for 30 plus devices. Sir. And towards the end, I'll even show you, uh, say, now this is all about the Raspberry Pi itself acting as a server and a client. Now, say you have a third party device. Sir. Like say you have a Windows 10 Azure device that wants to talk with this guy. How do you do that in that case, sir? This guy has exposed the API, sir, both RESTful API, sir. So do a post, do a get and start playing around this. Yeah. Like a full stack for yeah. the solution. Yeah. So we got IP address. Uh, I'll show uh, one, two, one sixty uh, eight dot uh, one sixty nine. No, one sixty. 9.254.39.71, enter. So uh, if I show you my current uh, setup, uh, I have two folders. Uh, uh, example one, it's not visible, it's actually uh, bluish. Example one and example two. I'll even show the code and put on GitHub uh, for you to play around. Now, currently when we said sudo webipy hyphen c slash so and so, we were invoking example one's input uh, files. Uh. Now I'll change that config file. Uh. How do I do that? Uh? sudo nano and the entire steps what I have done is all on blogs or internet now. Okay, even ping me for that stuff. I'm not going that detail. Uh, so do you understand what the code is happening? Dan uh, basic code actually. Yeah. Nano ET, uh, etc. Uh, web, uh, web iopi config. Uh. You see uh, this is the setup. So here you see my script. Uh, it says okay, my script runs from uh, this location. Uh, which is example 1 python folder vagera. I'll change that to example 2 now. Uh, and I'll even explain how that code runs up. And uh, my custom HTML is loaded from example 2. Enter. Now sudo webiopy. sudo webiopy hyphen c. You will run etc webiopy. And you can even configure this device, uh, this framework, to auto run on boot. For the demo, actually going and manually typing the command. You can even make it run automatically on board. So you don't even have to have any manual intervention in a true prediction environment. You don't have to log in and keep telling start, 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 start. It automatically start. Let's run the this one. Okay. Okay, I got some problem, no fire of Okay, I made a mistake over here. Example underscore two. Example underscore three. Now I'm running my second example. 
uh, if I open up my, again, refresh my browser, the IP address has changed, my local IP, once again, 254.39.71, colon, 8000. So now you see different buttons. It says click me or shut down. When I actually say shut down, I'm running a backend code in my Python that invokes the shell shutdown command. So I can actually talk with my shell processor. And when I say click me, it actually goes back and says turn turned off, it's already off. Turned on, so it should go to a different uh, GPIO. Yeah. I, I connected a different uh, GPIO pin now. When I say again, uh, click me, it goes back to my Python code, turns on the GPIO, and sends data back to my web browser. That's what I'm going to show over here. You see the power that comes up, lamp turned on. That is not coming from my HTML code. It's being sent from my Python code. So if you want to build up, a, say, a very high data processing uh, app uh, where Python does all the processing uh, and have that data sent back to the client, you can even do that. Uh. So the pop-up is not coming from my HTML code. I didn't show the code. Uh. It's actually being sent back from my Python code. Uh. Again, I just show that. Uh. So this thing, actually, the lamp turned on message is coming from the server back end uh, from Python. It's not uh, the front end, actually. Which means you can do any processing in the background and send data back to the client. Okay, why this happened or that happened or stuff like that. So that is the whole uh, idea behind the whole framework. So I'll show you a, a small project if I have time. I'll show you what I have done. <coughs> uh, any questions? So uh, uh, let me show the demo first, and then I'll actually uh, talk about it. So you know what a leap motion is? Right. Who created the leap motion? So leap motion is a device, unlike Kinect that takes your body gestures, leap motion takes your hand gestures in a very accurate fashion. So I have been doing lots of hardware hands with leap motion that sends data wires to motors, etc. Now I wanted to actually integrate that leap motion device with the Raspberry Pi. So I just show a demo, and I have done that whole setup through the same framework. So I talk how that fits into the WebIO Pi framework. Now let me show the demo. I don't have uh, this one. Mm. So that's my uh, leap motion over there. Uh, you see this uh, thing over here? That is again my web IO by framework, uh, the same framework running up over there. I have put up a camera on my Raspberry Pi that sends data back to my uh, web browser, which could be anything, your phone or tablet or anything like that. And through gestures, I'm actually controlling it wirelessly onto the Raspberry, uh, onto the motor. You actually have uh, a Raspberry Pi and a webcam. So that's all being done through WebIO Pi itself. Nothing uh, really different. Uh, so because Raspberry Pi is a Linux based machine, anything that supports Raspberry Pi can be leveraged here to build any application. The webcam supports Raspberry Pi. I'm streaming the data back to my browser through WebIO Pi framework itself. And how did uh, Leap Motion come into picture? Leap Motion requires uh, a physical PC always connected. So I have taken up the JS of Leap Motion. Put on the web framework and then load it when I run the framework. As simple as that. Not independent. Yeah. Leap motion is not independent. You have to always connect to a PC. Yeah. So that's a very simple example, actually. You, the, the important thing over here is actually uh, this guy. The web part is actually uh, web IO pi itself. And how is that? Where is it running? Can you tell me where is it running? On the pi. On the pi. Where is the pi? Yeah. The the on the pi. Yeah. 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 That's it. Now, what we'll do is that we'll be setting a leap motion on the board. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we'll do one more quick thing before we uh, ask, open it up for questions. Uh, let me kill this guy. Okay, no problem. I'll just show one last uh, demo of where this whole fits into IoT and. Uh,
So now my same standard uh, stuff, same standard uh, output. Now I'm gonna actually open up a third party uh, application, a third party device, sir. Well, like in my case, a command from a third party PC, etc. And I'm gonna now get or control the GPIO from a different device, sir. Through post API, through post commands, like you know, restful commands, sir. To show that uh, any other device can also control my GPIO, sir. Say so you want to build up an Android app or maybe Windows app. Uh, that kind of controls this device or get some data back. So we use REST APIs sir, to control or play around with the devices. So I will show that demo. Uh, let's do a curl, curl, curl x uh, get IP address 1600.254.39.71.8000. And then what do we do? Like, forgot actually. Uh, GPIO slash uh, uh, PC slash Android app. Uh, Let me just check my notes. Uh, one second. I just tried it last night, so. Yeah, so it says to get the GPIO uh, value, uh, get GPIO number and the value. So I should So you got, uh, I got the value 1. If you can see, uh, let me go back over here and the So I have mapped my uh, pin to LED one over here. Now this is a third-party client. I'm just doing a post API. I'm just calling the API on the Raspberry Pi itself. So any device can actually pull, pull the Raspberry Pi and get what's on the sensor, sir. or even control it manually. Yeah. So like say when I actually uh, do a curl request, curl is the code we use to do or send post or get request uh, and test for data. So it's saying uh, one. When I actually change my uh, device and say. It shows me zero. So any third-party device can also send or control the web by web framework or the Raspberry Pi server as such. Yeah. Yes, exposed. And this is exposed actually. So it's all open. So once you get the IP of the server, you can send data connect with data. So in an M2M network or an M2M project, you're doing machine to machine communication or machine to machine control, you can use the API itself. And this entire setup is just done by a simple uh, dot setup from the Raspberry Pi, web API framework itself, nothing beyond that. You don't have to worry about opening up the 8000 port and doing incoming traffic and all that stuff. And the last part before I close this uh, thing is, it, this entire framework also can be controlled over the internet. Now let's say you have this thing set up in your home with your phones, etc. You can open up the incoming DDS uh, port, get your router configuration, and then control this from the internet anywhere from the world. This guy will be running in your home and also have access from outside the world. So you can open up your Raspberry, get a dynamic IP and then start playing around with the Raspberry Pi. That's about the whole stuff. Any questions? <laughs> if you want to see the backend, I can just, uh, we have some like five, uh, we have some time so I can actually uh, walk through the code. I'll just be very quick in my code and not really go in much detail.
So we have typically two folders, HTML and Python. The HTML contains the index file that <laughs> streams the front end. Python has the back end uh, code uh, or the script or py file. Let me open up the HTML code uh, ls uh, sudo nano index.html. It's not good, so let me open up from my PC. I actually even gave this at angel hack a while back, so I have this folder named still angel hack over here. This is the code. It, it might look very uh, obfuscated, I mean, little complex, but otherwise it's very simple. You just have uh, all the header meta and all that stuff. Uh, just one line, uh, which is uh, invoking the uh, webiopy.js library coming from the framework. Uh, once I uh, import my library of the webiopy framework, and then I simply uh, use one line, just one line, to create a button, just one line. I, do, I don't have to do any uh, custom uh, mapping or any other stuff, just pin mapping, the display text is shown over there. That's it. In my case, I've used uh, GPIO pin 11. You can use any other such, uh, whatever you want. Just one line to get the hardware interaction done. And then what you see bottom is all the CSS styling and uh, your diff tag that adds the actual element to the web page. That's it, straightforward. If I see the backend uh, HTML uh, Python code, it is uh, nothing. It is actually nothing. It just uh, shows me the pin number. And like you all know, Arduino, it goes in a loop, right? The same thing. Set up, loop, destroy. Set up, initialize the GPI pin directions, loop, go forever. Now, why is the loop empty over here? I don't see anything in loop, right? It's just sleeping over here. Because I'm not doing anything as such. Only when the user clicks something, I have to do some operation. So that code is not even shown in the code, in the script over here. That's handled in the backend by the uh, framework itself. And then on destroy, you actually want to turn on the jeep and make it uh, low. That's it. So that's about the whole uh, setup. Uh, for the framework part, I'll actually put up the codes on the GitHub repository. You can actually walk through the code examples. Uh. So that was about uh, web by your framework. Right? Any questions or any thoughts about this part? So oh, let's, uh, let me summarize and then you can talk actually. Uh, we talked about web by framework which is an IoT framework that allows you to build IoT applications on the Raspberry Pi itself, acting as both a client and a server. You can even control the Pi from outside the network through uh, internet. And you can literally run anything that HTML supports or even Python supports. Yeah. That's the whole thing.